AT&T Fiber presents a straightforward moment. Game on, baby. This looks great. Yeah, streaming is amazing with AT&T Fiber. Must be nice being a gagillionaire. Yup, and the straightforward pricing has made me want to be straightforward with you. I'd much rather stream ice dancing. Is that Alma Hansen and Bjorn Anders? Oh, uh, straightforward is better. No equipment fees, no data caps, no price increase at 12 months. Live like a gagillionaire with AT&T Fiber. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash hypergig for details. A toast to our new college grad who fills us with so much joy. Almost as much as when we're in our RV. Oh, the world is your oyster, kiddo. And ours, too. Now that we're covered with Progressive, Dad and I can hop in our RV anytime we want. Might even splurge on a retractable awning. Oh, look out. <laughs> Sorry, what was I talking about? Protect your loved one with an RV policy from Progressive. Take as little as four minutes to see what you could save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Welcome to mini episode 187 of Real Life Ghost Stories. And I have four spooky stories for you today. And story number one comes from Nicole. In 2016, my boyfriend Luke died. I was already a huge believer in spirits and my belief grew even stronger after he died. My friend Rachel is very in touch with her spiritual side and has actually seen Luke after he died. I was having a rough night so I called Rachel and she came over to sit with me. On my birthday, Luke's family sent balloons and flowers to the tattoo shop where I was getting my first tattoo. I brought the balloons home and left them in my dining room. It was around three in the morning and I was in my living room sobbing when all of a sudden I stopped. I stared into my dining room and said, The balloons are moving. Confused and shocked, Rachel replied, What? So I said, It's Luke. The balloons moved and lined up directly in front of me. It then turned so the balloon was facing me. It didn't stop there though. I should mention that the balloons had already started deflating at this point. The balloon that was resting on the floor was now in the air again and the balloon that was floating midway was now hitting the ceiling. That just doesn't happen. Balloons don't start floating again once they have sunk. The balloons then moved all the way around my dining room table and into the kitchen. At this point, my dad came downstairs and of course I ran over to tell him what just happened. The balloons stopped moving so I grabbed them and put them back where they were originally. My dad and I were just talking for a bit when from the other room we heard, They're moving again. The balloons then took the same course as they did before. My dad is a skeptic so I'm not really sure what his thoughts were on this event. The balloons hung out in the kitchen for a bit. My dad then headed back upstairs into our loft. Rachel and I stayed watching the balloons, hoping to figure out what Luke was trying to tell us. The balloons began moving again and made their way through my kitchen and into the entryway. We have a high entryway with a balcony to the loft. We watched the large balloons floating all the way up to the top of the balcony and then back down again making a large circle. They then went to the door and Rachel and I were very confused as to why they went to the door. I was standing on the stairs by the door trying to decipher this. The balloons then made their way over to me where I could almost sense how Luke was holding the balloons and walking around with them. They then made their circle again going to the top of the balcony as if to say hi to my dad and then back down again. Rachel had brought her Ouija board over, so I asked my dad if we could do the Ouija board. As I was walking back downstairs, it hit me. I looked at Rachel and said, the board is in the car. Rachel had parked in front of our house, directly in front of our door. We then realised Luke wanted us to go outside and get the board so he could talk to us. We could not believe it. This is not the first time that we have had a story that has centred around balloons and loss. Maybe it was like the piano in the last couple of weeks. Maybe it's something easy or the lights turning on and off. Maybe it's something that is 
takes a little bit of energy in order to be able to fulfill the task or the action of moving the balloons. I also feel like there should be a part two to this story. So first of all, I really do apologise if there was a part two and I accidentally cut it off because that happens sometimes. But if there is a part two and you feel comfortable sharing what happened when you use the Ouija board, please do send it in. Let us know what happened next. With stories like this, there will also always be people who have a logical explanation for it. But the fact of the matter is, if this brings you comfort, if it makes you feel better, if it makes you feel more connected to the person that you loved and lost, then that's all that matters. And story number two comes from Syanthalum. It was in the year 2011, roughly. I couldn't remember the date and the day of the incident, but what happened to me on that particular day still haunts my mind today. I remember it was a hot summer's night. Me and my family were in the living room watching a movie. Since earlier that day, I had cramps from playing soccer too much with friends. I felt exhausted and decided to sleep early. I told my dad that I was going to bed early and wished them all a good night. My room was next to the living room, not very far away. I had this careless or ignorant habit of leaving my bedroom door wide open most of the time. As I was laying in bed, I realised that I had forgotten to close the door behind me when I was entering the room. Oh, fuck it, I'm too exhausted, I said, and went fast to sleep. It was in the middle of the night when I felt a strong sensation that someone or something was behind me. I was laying sideways, facing the wall, and I was too darn sleepy to even open my eyes, but I knew I just had to roll over and see who or what it was. And so I slowly rolled over and what I saw was a woman with long white hair covering her face and she was wearing a white gown. She stood beside the bed motionless. I was so sleepy at the time so I paid no mind to it and thought that it was my mother checking on me. So I ignored it and continued sleeping. Morning came and I got up and rushed to the kitchen where my mom was making breakfast. I patted her on the back and sarcastically joked to her about why she had to put on an old gown just to check on me in the night. My mom was confused and looked at me and asked, Are you sleep talking? I replied, No, I'm wide awake. You came into my room last night, didn't you? As if. I went straight to bed after the movie was over. Nobody would bother themselves coming into your room. I was shocked and baffled at the same time. It left me thinking for a minute about who that person was that night, if my mom wasn't the person. And I had no sisters. I had a second deep thought that if my mother was the one checking on me, she would surely leave the door closed after leaving my room, but when I got up it was open like the way I left it. I had chills running down my spine realising that someone or something visited me last night, and I knew that it was not human. See, I thought this was going to be like a sleep paralysis story when I first started reading it, but then it's obviously not a sleep paralysis story because you woke up with that feeling that somebody was behind you and then you were perfectly capable of turning over. Now, one of my friends who is like super sceptical, like doesn't believe in anything, doesn't have any religion, doesn't believe in anything at all, she just thinks you live, you die and that's it. She told me before that she had an experience after a loved one had died and she woke up in the night and she just felt that there was somebody in the room, just felt it 100% there was somebody standing behind her in the bedroom and to her it was like the closest thing that she had had to a paranormal experience. Now she obviously, being completely sceptical, had um, intellectualised the experience as something that was psychological. But whatever your beliefs are about these experiences, whether you think they're psychological, whether you think it's paranormal, whether you think it's sleep paralysis, it's a dream, whatever you think it is, the fact of the matter remains that they are profound experiences. So my friend will still talk about that experience to this day and she still talks about how intense and strong that feeling was to this day, even though she doesn't believe that it was paranormal. So it really does have an impact on people, that really strong feeling, that intuition that sort of exists inside all of us. And it's again another time where when you're so tired, when you're so sleepy, you just can't be arsed with the paranormal. You just can't be bothered with it. So you end up going, oh, fuck it, I'm just going to go back to sleep. I'll worry about this in the morning. It's probably my mom. It's fine. Knowing full well, I mean, there must have been a part of your brain that like knew it wasn't your mom. But you're just like, that's rationalised enough. Back to sleep for me. 
I wonder are the like ghosts, entities, whatever, disappointed at that point when they're like, oh, for fuck's sake, I was trying to be really scary and you've just turned over and gone back to sleep. Today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. Welcome back, everyone. So good to see you all back again this week. It is such a shame that Chupacabra couldn't make it, but given the reports this week that he is, in fact, a dog, perhaps Monsters Anonymous is not the best place for him. Now, today... We're going to recap on what we learned last week, which was... That's right! Hello Fresh, America's number one meal kit. You guys were really paying attention. So how can we use Hello Fresh as a great alternative to hunting and consuming humans? You've all got New Year's goals, and Hello Fresh is here to help you achieve them. Skip the grocery store and skip that eternal rat race of hunting humans and take control of your time and budget with delicious recipes delivered right to your cave without all of the worry of being caught on camera and put in a paranormal YouTube compilation. Okay, okay, Mothman, Mothman. I appreciate your contribution, but remember last week, we talked about using our indoor voices or indoor echolocation. You are very loud in this small space. Also, please keep the death prophecies to the end of the session as it upsets the other entities. Thank you. Let's continue. With HelloFresh, eating well in the new year can be stress-free and delicious. With over 35 weekly recipes, they have the options that you're looking for to help you achieve those goals. Choose calorie smart and carb smart recipes or even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading your proteins or adding protein that isn't human to a veggie dish. Also, I'd like to think I wasn't this patronising as a teacher, but I probably was. And I can tell you that I have received a whopping 89 HelloFresh boxes thus far, and I love it. Helps me to eat better, save money, limit my food waste, etc. Okay, Bigfoot, Bigfoot. I love that you are trying really hard, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you to remove my leg from your mouth, okay? Some people are into it, not me. Why don't you use that energy to go to HelloFresh.com slash RealLifeGhostStories22 and use code RealLifeGhostStories22 for 22 free meals plus free shipping. Now, everybody say it with me. That's HelloFresh.com slash RealLifeGhostStories and use code RealLifeGhostStories22 for 22 free meals plus free shipping. AT&T Fiber presents a straightforward moment. Game on, baby. This looks great. Yeah, streaming is amazing with AT&T Fiber. Must be nice being a gagillionaire. Yup, and the straightforward pricing has made me want to be straightforward with you. I'd much rather stream ice dancing. Is that Alma Hansen and Bjorn Anders? Oh, Straightforward is better. No equipment fees, no data caps, no price increase at 12 months. Live like a gagillionaire with AT&T Fiber. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash hypergig for details. And story number three comes from Roxanne. My grandfather was born in 1912 and grew up on a farm. One day, he and one of his brothers had visited some boys on another nearby farm. They went through a heavily wooded area to go and come from the other farm. It was late and the sun was going down when they left to return home. As they were walking through the woods, they suddenly saw a woman sitting in a tree. She was completely white and they could see through her. They were terrified and started to run. As they burst from the woods into their yard, the woman was sitting on top of the well looking at them. Their mother heard them screaming and ran outside to see what was wrong. The woman vanished, and their mother thought their imagination had gotten the better of them. The next day they learned a woman in the community had died that night, about the same time they saw the woman in the woods. My grandfather was a religious man, but he very much believed in ghosts because he was sure he had seen one. Growing up, I lived very near my grandparents. It was the 1960s and we lived in a very rural farming area on a dusty dirt road. There was a field separating the two houses. It was maybe a quarter of a mile between them. The entire other side of the road was one very large pasture where the owner, Mr. Paul, 
raised cows for beef. I freely came and went between the two houses during the day, but was not allowed to walk alone at night. One night I had been listening to 45 records with my aunt. She was my mother's youngest sister, and like a big sister to me. It had gotten dark, so she was going to walk me home. As we approached the road, we both saw a light. It was a round, white light. I asked my aunt what it was, and she said it must be Mr. Paul out with a lantern checking on the cows. It moved towards us. My aunt called out, Mr. Paul, is that you? There was no response. She then called the names of his two sons, and there was no response. As the light moved closer, we realised we could not see a person holding the lantern or anything except the ball of light. My aunt tried to remain calm and told me to start walking. As we walked down the road towards my house, the light began to move along with us. It moved parallel to us. When we reached my driveway, both of us broke and ran into the house. After the light was gone, I stood at the end of the driveway and watched to make sure my aunt returned home safely. We both saw it, and to this day we don't know what we saw, but it was scary. My grandmother later told me that my grandfather, the one who saw the woman in the woods as a boy, sometimes saw lights in the fields in the woods, and he didn't know what they were. I never stayed at my grandparents past dark again. I don't want to cause any alarm, but that sounds like some fairy bullshit to me. Doesn't it though? So you've got a woman sitting in the tree, and then she appears on the well further along that is very banshee behavior and people don't always hear the banshee scream i mean she does scream that's part of the lore but not always and then you've got lights in the woods and lights on the farm and to be honest sounds like a fairy infestation and there's nobody that can help you with that i mean obviously we'd have to build a time machine if we wanted to go back and help you because this is a a past story uh but yeah there you go it's it's a fairy problem you've got a fairy problem and nobody can help you. Imagine if there was like exterminators that would come and get rid of your fairies. I don't even want to say that sentence out loud actually. I had a whole scenario in my head and I'm erasing it because I'm not taking the risk of talking about the fairies in that way. But that's that's what it sounds like. I mean, I wonder did the woman in the community have an Irish connection? Did she have an Irish name? Was it actually a banshee that your grandfather and his brother saw? And then later, the lights that you saw were something to do with fairies. Who knows? Answer number four comes from Erica. My sister and I are five and a half years apart in age. We've always looked identical though, when you look at our photos from the same ages. One night I had a dream of her and I in a car, almost driving in slow motion, with an endless road ahead of us in the middle of nowhere. When I turned around and see my great aunt and my two grandmothers who have passed sitting in the back seat with us. I tried to speak to each of them but they didn't answer and then I snapped my head back around to see us starting to crash into something unknown and then I jolted from my sleep. I was relatively freaked out because I hadn't ever had a dream so surreal and vivid. That morning I was about to call my sister when her number popped up and tried to call me. I said... There's our telepathy again, I was about to call you. And she laughed and went on to explain that she had had a crazy dream last night and I said, wow, so did I. She continued with what she encountered in her dream and I was paralysed. Her and I have always had the odd feelings that we had the twin telepathy going on because we'd call or text each other at the same times and would call one another when we knew we had bad days without even talking to each other prior. She asked why I was quiet and I said, I had the exact same dream. And we went on to throw out theories as to why or how it could have happened. To this day, we talk about it and I still get chills. I'd like to say it's our angels looking out for us, but I really wonder why my sister and I have such a peculiar bond you wouldn't normally see in an almost six year difference of siblings, but you would see in twins. I know we've talked a lot on the podcast about like twin telepathy and the connection between twins, but I don't think it is necessarily limited to twins. I think sometimes there's siblings that are like super close, so close as to how we would perceive 
twins to be. Um, but I also know twins that really resent the fact that they're twins and, and, you know, don't really have that same connection. So it does happen. It doesn't necessarily mean that when you're a twin, you have that really strong, almost telepathic connection. And, you know, we've seen this kind of thing loads of times with like siblings, with parents and their children, where people share this major connection. And I just think it's so strange. Like, it's almost like, I don't know, a spiritual connection, like a, a a psychic connection. I don't know how to describe it. I really don't know how to describe it. Like my sister and I, as I've spoken about before, we have the same nightmares. We don't have a shared trauma, but we share the same nightmares, which is, and I don't really know why. We've only found that out later in life. So maybe it is just about having a really strong connection with somebody, but that doesn't really explain how you'd have the same the same surreal dream on the same night like was something happening for both of you that your brains kind of aligned at that point and presumably you weren't in the same building because you rang each other the next day to say hey oh god I had this really weird dream so strange thank you so much for listening to today's episode thank you to Nicole Cyanthwam Roxanne and Erica for sending in your stories the last story came from May the 15th 2022 if you have a story to share you can send it to real life ghost stories podcast at gmail.com you can check out anything that you need to know about the podcast on the website real life ghost stories podcast.com if you are desperate for extra content you can subscribe to patreon.com forward slash real life ghost stories where for five dollars a month or two dollars a month you get access to heaps of extra content as well as every main and mini episode completely ad free and on that note i shall see you next time Take as little as three minutes to see if you could save on motorcycle insurance with Progressive. Come on, you've spent more time than that trying to name your bike. Hmm, how about the Crusher? I guess it's not really crushing anything. The Silver Bolt? No. Oh, oh, what about Pepper? Mysterious. Is it a pet or a condiment? Surprise! It's a motorcycle. Uh, no, that's stupid. Get a quote in as little as three minutes at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. AT&T Fiber presents a straightforward moment. Game on, baby. This looks great. Yeah, streaming is amazing with AT&T Fiber. It must be nice being a gagillionaire. Yup, and the straightforward pricing has made me want to be straightforward with you. I'd much rather stream ice dancing. Is that Alma Hansen and Bjorn Anders? Oh, straightforward is better. No equipment fees, no data caps, no price increase at 12 months. Live like a gagillionaire with AT&T Fiber. Limited availability in select areas. Visit att.com slash hypergig for details.